Hello, my name is Dakota Harmon, and I will be discussing the experiment performed by myself and Nick, determining kappa by using the measured period of an oscillating steel ball. During this presentation, I will go over the purpose of the experiment, the necessary background and theory, the experimental design, our data and analysis, and finally, our conclusion. The purpose of this experiment is to calculate the adiabatic exponent for ideal gases, kappa, for air. We want to do this without measuring any of the specific heat capacities of air because through the kinetic gas theory, kappa is defined as the specific heat capacity at constant pressure, Cp, divided by the specific heat capacity at constant volume, Cv, where Cp is equal to Cv plus the universal gas constant, R. We could therefore measure Cv, use it to find Cp, and then take the division to find kappa. But we aim to verify that the oscillation of a steel ball on a cushion of gas can also find kappa for that gas. To begin, the change in internal energy of a gas is equal to the change in its heat plus the change in its mechanical work. We start by looking at an adiabatic process a process in which the change in heat is equal to zero. We can then combine the ideal gas law with an equation that relates the change in internal energy to the change in temperature to arrive at Poisson's equation, which will be used later in the motion of the steel ball. Next, we examine an isochoric process where the change in mechanical work is equal to zero. We know that the change in heat is equal to Cv times the change in temperature, and the law of equipartition relates the change in energy of a gas to its change in temperature. We can combine these two equations to arrive at a relationship between Cv and the number of degrees of freedom the gas has, F. We can now use this to relate kappa to the number of degrees of freedom of a gas. Through thermal physics, we know that different types of gases have different numbers of degrees of freedom leading to different kappa values. These kappa values are 1.67 for monoatomic gases, 1.4 for linear molecules, and 1.33 for nonlinear molecules. Since air is mostly linear molecules, we expect it to have a kappa value of 1.4. We can set a steel ball in motion in a precision glass tube atop a Mariotte's flask, where it will oscillate on top of a cushion of air. When the ball is in equilibrium, the total pressure of the cushion of air is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the weight of the ball. When the ball moves a distance x away from equilibrium, the pressure changes by dp, leading to a force exerted on the ball equal to the area of the precision tube times dp. Using the notation of Newton's second law, this force is equal to the mass of the ball times its acceleration shown here as the second derivative of position. By differentiating Poisson's equation, we arrive at expressions for dp in terms of dv and for dv in terms of x. Then, by combining these three expressions, we arrive at an equation of motion for the steel ball. This is a second-order linear equation. In these types of equations, we define the constant coefficient of x to be the angular frequency, omega, squared. Therefore, the angular frequency is equal to the square root of the coefficient. We can relate this to the period of oscillation, t, via t equals 2 pi over omega. Rearranging this for kappa results in the bottom equation. This equation shows that to determine kappa, we must know the values of the mass of the steel ball, the volume of air the ball is oscillating on, the cross-sectional area of the precision tube, the total pressure of the gas, and the period of oscillation. Since the only two values that will not remain constant for the duration of the experiment are the volume of gas and the period of oscillation, we will vary the volume of air and measure the period. We chose to vary the volume of air by filling the flask with water and emptying the water one liter at a time in between trials. 
To measure the period, we used the program called Tracker. This was installed on the lab computer and allows us to upload a video of the ball in motion and track its oscillation. We do this by playing the video one frame at a time and clicking on the location of the ball. Tracker then generates a data table describing the time and location of the ball. To obtain the measurement for atmospheric pressure, we did not have access to a working barometer. So we use the smartphone app Firefox, which takes measurements from the internal measuring devices in phones and outputs raw data. To the right, you will see a screenshot of the output from the internal barometer of my Samsung Galaxy S10. The mass of the steel ball, area of the precision tube, and total flask volume are shown. The mass and area will be used to calculate kappa, and the total volume of the flask was needed to measure the volume of air the ball would oscillate on. We began the experiment by pouring 10 liters of water into the flask. So the first measurement was taken at a volume of air equal to 1.5 liters. We drained water until the ball's displacement from equilibrium was far enough that it was hitting the bottom of the tube, which meant that it was no longer viable to use the equation of motion we were using. The atmospheric pressure was estimated based on the average reading from Firefox over the two hour duration of the experiment while the pressure due to the weight of the ball was found with the above values. These were summed for, to the total pressure. To obtain the period, the data tables from Tracker were exported to Excel. Excel was then used to find the time that every peak of oscillation happened and find the time in between adjacent peaks, which is the period for that time frame. These were then averaged to obtain an overall period for that trial. A sample of the calculations is shown. The results of doing the previous calculations over all trials are shown. The relatively small standard deviations indicate that the average period is a good representation of all the individual periods for that trial. It should be noted here that one data point is missing, the volume of air equal to 7.5 liters. The tracker data for this trial was somehow lost during the export to Excel, so it has been omitted from all calculations. These volume and period values were then used to obtain values for kappa. This is a comparison between the longest period of oscillation and the second shortest period. The data points show a clear oscillatory motion with consistent periods for both. The important distinction between the two is the number of data points. The trial at 9.5 liters has many more data points than at 2.5. This is due to the greater volume trial having a longer period, thus resulting in slower motion of the ball. In Tracker, we were able to go through many more frames to obtain the six peaks with the slower speed than with the faster speed, which also has six peaks. The more data points result in less distance moved in between frames, meaning the accuracy of tracking the motion is higher with the higher volume. This is likely the cause of the trend shown here. There is a clear upward trend among our calculated kappa values toward the accepted value as the period increases, which coincides with the increase in data points and therefore accuracy from tracker. However, despite this upward trend, to arrive at a single reported value for kappa, as it should be consistent over all trials, we used the average as the best guess and the standard deviation as the uncertainty. This results in a value of 1.32 plus and minus 0 0.06 for kappa. The limitations of this experiment are due to a possible systematic error. As mentioned before, the lower air volume trials had fewer data points to track the motion and were therefore likely less accurate. To accommodate for this, we recommend repeating the experiment but constraining the air volumes to be greater than about 5.5 liters, as this is where we observe a significant change in kappa values. It would also seem from our data 
that the slower the period of oscillation, the more accurate the value of kappa. In conclusion, we obtained a kappa value of air of 1.32 plus and minus 0 0.06. This is not significantly different from the expected 1.4, but it is also not significantly different from kappa equal to 1.33 that is expected for nonlinear molecules. As such, we recommend repeating this experiment with an improved range of volumes to reduce the error and increase the accuracy thereby verifying that this method is effective in calculating kappa accurately. Thank you.